What is up? What is going on? Welcome back to the COVID-19 War Room. I am Coach Patterson. If you're from a different class, welcome. If you're from a different district, welcome. We're happy you're here. Happy you found us. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the uh, Civil War. Today, we're talking about the causes of the Civil War. Um, and so, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, uh, we have four causes of the Civil War. Um, and depending on who you're talking to is going to depend on um, the answer that you get. So, the Civil War is in some way, shape, or form uh, fought over all three of these things. Now, like I said, who you talk to depends on uh, which cause is front and center. Um, so we have states' rights, we have sectionalism, we have slavery, we have tariffs. I am of the belief that states' rights was the driving factor. Was slavery the underlying factor? Absolutely, right? You probably don't have the states' rights argument uh, unless you have the slavery issue. But I don't think it's fair to say uh, that the whole Civil War was fought over slavery. And we're going to get into each one of these causes uh, here shortly. So we're going to start by states' rights. So the South, uh, the Confederacy eventually, but the South for now, um, was holding near and dear the Tenth Amendment. And so the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution says the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor to its states are reserved for the states respectively or to the people. Now, slavery is not mentioned in the Constitution of the United States. And so when um, the United States government started passing some slavery stuff, um, they were kind of trying to abolish slavery. Um, the South said, whoa, 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 hold on. It's not up for you to decide because it's not mentioned in the Constitution. It's not an amendment to this point. Um, and so it's not up for you to decide. It's for us as the states to decide. And so, like I said, it revolves around slavery. But states' rights is going to be the driving factor here um, in this whole ordeal, right? Uh, would we have a civil war without slavery? No, probably not. Um, we'll get into why here in a minute. But um, the states' rights cause, you can't, I mean, you can't deny that it does revolve around slavery, but um, I believe that it is the leading cause of the civil war. So, um, the South also believed that the Union was creating laws that only benefited the industrial North. Um, so, the economies at the time for these two regions of the United States, the South was very much uh, agricultural based, which was why they had slaves. Um, that doesn't mean it's a good thing, right? Just because you have a farm doesn't mean you should have slaves. Um, but they had slaves because of the agricultural economy. The North had become way more industrialized or had more factories and uh, things like that. So they were able to, you know, not really have a use for slaves um, because they no longer needed them to work in the fields. Things were becoming automated. Uh, you needed less of a workforce, more of a skilled labor. Um, and so they kind of moved away from slavery. Um, but that agricultural or agrarian economy was being crippled by these laws um, that the North was passing. Next we have sectionalism. And so uh, sectionalism is one of your vocabulary words and uh, I expect that you, you know, have a good familiarity with it now. Um, but you identify as a region instead of a, as a whole, right? So. Uh, that would be like us saying, nope, we're Texans, we're not Americans, not anything like that. I, I do believe I'm an American. I know that I'm an American, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a Texan, right? I live and breathe Texas history, live and breathe Texas. Uh, all things Texas, I think most things Texas are good. Um, 
And so citizens in the United States before the Civil War started identifying themselves as, hey, I'm from the North, I'm from the South, or you can't be here, you're a Southerner. Uh, we even had some Westerners, but this, this wasn't super common. Um, but mainly it was, hey, I'm from the North, you're from the South, go, get out of here. Um, and so we're going to see this tension grow um, in, the, in these times right before the Civil War just based on the fact of where you're from, where you live, what you do for a living. Um, so the North thought that the, you know, the South were just behind and everything because they were still an agricultural economy. And the South said, you know, we wouldn't want to have it any other way. So you're going to get this sectionalist uh, uh, ideology that's going to lead to a uh, uh, little tension brewing. Then, like I said, uh, we do have slavery. I mean, you know, I think everybody knows that the war became about slavery, um, especially with the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, Lincoln made it about slavery. Um, but you have the issue of slavery, and slavery, you have to understand, while we can sit here in 2020 and look back on it and say, wow, that was a really dumb thing to do. We shouldn't treat people like that, and I 100% agree with you. Um, but until you have somebody that says, hey, um, we shouldn't be doing this, uh, you have to understand that it was the social norm, right? A lot of countries had slaves. Um, a lot of different groups were slaves. Um, you had, you know, some countries that were uh, producing their own population into slavery. If you were poor, you went into slavery. Um, if you, you know, broke the law or whatever, you went into slavery. Um, and so slavery was kind of a commonplace thing to do. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't, you know, make an excuse. But it was a commonplace thing to do until some people in the United States said, hey, we shouldn't be doing this. And so eventually the North found out that they didn't need slaves. They could, you know, do the work on their own. They kind of stopped being lazy and, and did it. Um, but again, with that South relying on that agriculture and you have, you know, thousands of acres of farmland, um, they weren't ready to get rid of slavery. Um, and so when you had the United States or the North kind of pushing for this uh, end of slavery, it's going to lead to this uh, more tension. And eventually they're going to secede uh, from the Union. And then you had some tariffs. Um, so the United States government started putting uh, tariffs on some uh, imported goods, especially from the South. Um, they started, you know, charging people to uh, bring in cotton from the South, this, that, and the other. And uh, ended up happening is the South was relying on the North for their product, right? So the South would grow the cotton. Uh, the North would refine it and make it into um, something usable. So they would be buying the cotton from the South. Um, so these tariffs really crippled the South's economy. And uh, they kept raising the tariff and raising the tariff and raising the tariff. And that meant that uh, the South was making less and less money. And so that, again, tensions put all that together. Um, we have... A civil war brewing. Um, so you have two groups here, which is again nation divided. Um, you have Republicans, these are the people from the North, uh, abolitionist. Uh, Abraham Lincoln fits into this political party. He's going to be elected president in 1860. Then you have the Southern Democrats uh, who are in favor of slavery, fear that the, their way of life was in danger, and they strongly, strongly opposed uh, Abraham Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln made this statement, uh, which you'll have a discussion question about if you're in, if you're in my classes or uh, somebody else at Irons. Um, a nation divided can't stand upon itself. What do you what do you think he was uh, he was talking about there? I don't want to answer the question for you um, because you are going to have that discussion question. I'm going to I'm going to let your mind um, kind of go. But a nation divided against itself cannot stand. Take a minute. Think about that. Hopefully you were able to come up with uh, some sort of thought there. Um, again, if you're in my class, you'll have the chance to articulate that thought or tell me what you think. 
um, because we are going to talk all about it. So all those tensions brewing uh, eventually leads to secession. So uh, Abraham Lincoln is going to be elected in 1860. And at that point, the southern uh, governments, the southern leaders, the power people in the south are going to start uh, pushing for secession or for the south to secede from the Union. And so uh, South Carolina is going to be the first to go. Uh, and then they're going to be quickly followed by Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Louisiana. And then in the next three months, you're going to get Texas, Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina. Um, so it's it's going to be a quick uh, quick little deal here. Uh, it's kind of a the domino effect. So one goes, and then uh, many of the other southern states are going to follow, and uh, it's going to lead to uh, quite a bit of conflict. That we're going to talk about in a future lesson. So what is that? How does that apply to Texas? Um, so on January 28, 1861, uh, the Texas delegates and met in Austin, and then uh, about a month later, February 23, 1861, uh, they voted on whether or not to secede from the Union, and the Texans, 44,317 for secession, for leaving the unit, Union. 14,020 against. One of the biggest players that was against leaving the Union was Sam Houston. Uh, Sam Houston didn't necessarily disagree with the South about the state's rights issues and all that. Uh, he felt like leaving the United States was not in the best interest of Texas or in the United States. He knew there was going to be bloodshed. Uh, he knew that it wasn't going to end peacefully. Um, so he basically refused to take the uh, oath to the Confederacy and got kicked out of office. I mean, they told him, that's fine. Uh, we no longer need your services. Thank you for everything. Have a great time. Um, so he and his wife retire in Huntsville, which is the home of Sam Houston State University. Um, big statue for him there. And he's going to stay there, um, and he's going to die about two years later in 1863. Uh, which is basically pretty sad because he failed to take that uh, that oath because he kind of knew what was coming and he did not even get to see the end of the war. So uh, you get the all these states withdrawing from the Union and now they need to do something. They need to form a government. They need to you know, become a real nation um, so they they can have the power and the structure that they need. Um, and so all of these states that withdraw from the Union are going to call themselves the Confederate States of America. So here's just a map um, of the United States and the secession. So um, purple right here is going to be the territories. So there's no states in here. Uh, this is just going to be territories in the United States. Um, and then the green is going to be the states that stayed with the Union, and yellow is going to be states that uh, left the Union and started the Confederate States of America. As you can see, it's, it's the South, and that's why they got their name. And this is the North, and you have Oregon and California out here in the West um, that also stayed with the Union. So it's, we talked about that vote uh, for who's going to leave the union who is going to uh, who is for leaving the union who is against it uh, this is just a breakdown of the texas counties uh, and how they voted so the red is going to be against secession green is uh, they either didn't get their votes in or there's not enough organization out there for them to vote and then purple is going to be the counties that are for leaving the union or for secession and that's it. Um, so we're to the point where we are going to uh, have some conflict here. We're going to have some bloodshed in our next video. We're going to talk about uh, the first part of the Civil War. It gets pretty long. It's, uh, there's a lot of information to cover, so we broke it down into really it's three parts. So we got part one and part two, and then uh, Texas in the Civil War. And 
I hope I hope that you're following along, paying attention, uh, getting something useful out of this. That's a pretty interesting time in America and Texas history. Uh, so we hope hope that you are getting some out of it, and these are uh, working well for you. If you need anything from us, do let us know. We are here to help. Uh, Y'all take care. We'll see you in the next one.